Welcome back to Introduction to Engineering Design. This is still Module 5.5a, and what we're working on today is some circular pattern and the hole wizard. So before we get started on the hole wizard, we're going to basically look at the drawing that we're going to be working off of that depicts the pattern we're going to make. So what we're going to make is we're going to make a series of holes, uh, a set of five holes, uh, in a hub. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut these holes using the hole wizard. So it's the third exercise in this module. So before we get started, I need to talk a little bit about what these hole designations mean. So there's some standard symbology here that we haven't necessarily covered in great detail. Well, the first one is right here. We're looking at, that's a diameter symbol. So a complete circle, always dimensioned by a diameter, not a radius. Down here, what we'll see, this is the counterbore symbol. It looks kind of like a little uh, cup cut in half, counterbore symbol, and it shows a depth. So it's got a 3 quarter inch counterbore, 0.25 inches deep. The third hole in the series is a 0.375 diameter hole through, and this is a countersink. In that countersink, it tells you that it's an 82 degree angle countersink, uh, three quarters of an inch big at the top, so three quarters of an inch in diameter. Our next hole over here is in fact a tap hole, quarter 20. What that reference is, is a quarter inch screw or bolt, 20 threads per inch, and the thread category is a 1B. This symbol looks like an arrow going down with a top hat on it. Uh, indicates that the thread depth is 0.75 inches. 0.75 inches. So those are our holes. Let's get started. So I'm going to start a new drawing here. And basically I'm going to extrude into the front plane. And I'm going to start with a circle at the origin. That circle at the origin is going to be the size of my hub that we're going to extrude out. So you'll see it's an inch and a half deep, four inches in diameter. So let's get that going. So I'll smart dimension this to four inches. And while I'm uh, in here, well actually we'll, we'll wait for a second here. So now I'm going to go ahead and extrude that. So I'll exit my sketch, extrude it to 1.5 inches. And accept that. It doesn't really matter which way we go for this exercise, whether it's mid-plane or not. So on the surface, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a reference geometry. And I want to put a reference geometry that will locate all of these holes. So to do that, I'm going to make a construction circle of 2.5 inches in diameter based at the origin. So I'll go ahead and start a new sketch. Sketching on this surface. And start a circle. Now you'll notice that it's identical to the way we do it before, except I'm going to make this for construction. So you see that little checkbox makes it a dashed line. And I can still apply a dimension to it, 2.5. There we go. So now I've got this thing dimensioned. So now let's do a sketch and let's put a hole right above the origin or the center of my uh, circle. So what I'm going to do is use uh, this point tool. And I'm going to go ahead and drop a point onto my circle so it's coincident. I'm not going to really worry about where it is for right now. So what I'm going to do is add a geometric relationship between point 4 and my center. So I uh, click on the center and point 4, and I want them to be vertical that position that point exactly over the top except that relation now what i really want to do is i want to make a series of five points around this circle so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come up here and make a pattern on my sketch so here you'll see underneath the linear sketch pattern i'll click the drop down and choose a circular sketch pattern very similar to what we've seen before i need a circular path so i can choose an axis or I could choose a path. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the path. So that's the path that I'm going to uh, sketch around. I can change direction if I want. Uh, equal spacing, and I'm going to go ahead and command it to put in 5. And the entity that I'm going to pattern is going to be 
my sketch point. So you'll see it's going around in a clockwise direction and I can change directions if I want. So you'll see how it does that. And I'm going to basically just going to go around and pattern that uh, hole or pattern that sketch. So once I've done that, this is the result. What I've got is I've got a series of five points and I'm going to use those to locate my hole. So what we want to get going on next is a few hole wizards and we've done with, we've dealt with some of these. The first one I'm going to make a quarter inch through hole. So I'm going to exit my sketch and now I'm going to come out to my features and I'm going to go hole wizard. Now you can see that I can just go around and pick these points on this sketch because it's still visible. I haven't used that sketch yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and choose a hole and I'm going to come down and go to drill sizes and I'm going to go to uh, instead of all drill sizes I'm going to use fractional drill sizes and I want a 0.25 inch drill. Now this is one option that I've got selected is I can show the decimal values next to the fraction if you don't want to do the math in your head. So <clears throat> that's the type that I'm going to the type of hole I'm going to use and instead of blind I'm going to go through all for my end condition and click on my position tab. Once I click on my position tab you can see that I can highlight a point and place my hole there. And there I drop my hole over the top of my sketch point. And I'll accept it. Now I did a 3D sketch uh, in this particular entity to arrive at that hole. So there's my 3D sketch. And let me show you another way to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and undo the hole wizard. And I'm going to go back. But before I choose the hole wizard, this was the, what the instructions tell you to do, is I'm going to ask you to let me get out of my sketch here. Okay, I'm out of my sketch. And I'm going to select this face. And now I'm going to go ahead and command the hole wizard. Now when I go to the position, you can see that I don't have that option for a 3D sketch because I've already told it what surface I want to put the hole on. So a little different command. So I've got all the same values, 0.25 through all, position, hover over my point. And I got out of that. Sorry about that. Let me go back in here. Select my face, command hole wizard, go to my position, and drop that hole right in there. Accept it, and you'll see I bore a hole through. So let's do one more here. Let's do a three quarter inch hole with a counter bore. Again, I'm going to go to hole wizard. Sorry about that. I'm going to select my face, go to hole wizard, and now I'm going to choose a counter bore hole. So you'll see that's right there, counter bore hole. Now, uh, SolidWorks does a really good job of taking care of these holes for you. And we're going to do a 3 8 or 0.375 hole. And you can choose a bolt or some different things. Well, here you can customize these uh, conditions here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and customize these conditions to match what the drawing says. So it's a 0.375 hole, and I could just use a fractional size or anything, but uh, this is a very good tool and we're going to override some of it just to make it look right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a three quarter inch instead of five eighths counter bore. And the depth of my counter bore is going to be 0.25. So I've overridden the default values. Now I can come into my position, click on my hole placement when it's coincident, and drop it in and accept it. And you'll see there's my counter bore hole. The next one is going to be a counter sink hole. Same thing, 3 eighths of an inch, except this time counter sink, 82 degrees, that's selected, and I want it to be 0.75 deep, or 0.75 across the top. So I'll modify that. Again, go to my position. And I did not select my face before, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Accept it. And there's my counter bore hole. 
Next up, I'm going to do a tapped hole. So right over here, you'll find a straight tap hole, which is what you would like. So we'll drop that straight tapped hole in, and you'll see from your drawing that it is a quarter inch bolt, 20 thread pitch, UNC 1B. So I'm going to go down here and pick a quarter, 20, Thread class is 1B, and we want it 3 quarters of an inch deep. Now the end condition on this, I can change this, and I'll go to blind, and I'm going to go here and choose my depth of my thread, 0.75 deep. Uh, you can see that that's got the bore, or I could do my thread, so uh, it's going to thread half an inch deep on this one, and we'll just leave it at that. Click on my position come in, choose my whole location, drop it in, and accept it. The last one, I'm not sure if I remember what it was, I think it's a half inch hole. So I'm scrolling ahead so I can see. Yeah, it's just a plain half inch hole. So we're going to go hole wizard, and a standard hole, fractional size, one half, and through all. And then I'm going to drop that in position. And there you have it. That's essentially your sketch for doing holes. This is Introduction to Engineering Design. Thanks for watching.